Hey everyone, welcome back. Ever since I posted this video, a lot of y'all asked some very important questions about the match. So here's the first video in the series where I answer all your questions regarding the match. When I was going through the comments, I figured out that, that this was the most commonly asked question. So here's a video about my credentials where we talk about my USCE, LORs, research experiences, scores, interviews, everything. So sit back while I take you through my math story part two. for the match you have to get this thing called ERAS token. So this ERAS token will help you create an account and that will give access to a blank CD. ERAS is basically like a portal in which you have to upload all the documents that are required for residency. So there's a part in your CV which says experiences. So under experiences there are three major things. You have work experience, volunteer experience and research experience. But so personally for me I had a lot of volunteer experiences because I used to participate in a lot of things at uni and for many tiny things that I had done. But I did not want to add a lot of experiences on my CV. Uh, so I included the 10 most important ones. Like for example I helped set up the health service department at my university to make healthcare more accessible for international students. So I included that. Then there were some events that I helped organize. Some of my COVID volunteering experiences. I also contributed by doing certain illustrations for a children's storybook in order to raise funds for education. So those were the tiny things that I've done. So I picked out the 10 most important ones and I put it on my CV. So while you're writing your ERAS CV, keep in mind that anything you mention there can be brought up during the interview. So I made sure that I put in only those things which I feel I played an important role in and which actually taught me things that would help me become a good resident. So that was the goal I had in mind and that's how I picked out the top 10 ones. I will speak more about what to include and what not to include in a separate video when we'll be speaking about how to fill an ERAS CV. So that's saved for a separate video. Then comes work experience. So now in work experience, both your clinical experience and teaching experience counts as work experience. So for something to count as work experience, you don't really have to be paid for it as long as it's related to clinical or teaching comes under work experience. So over here, I think I had close to five work experiences. So in this, I obviously included my YouTube channel where I like, teach medical concepts and I also sent them a link to the YouTube channel and also to my rapid review USMLE playlist. So in case they want to check, they can just click and see the quality of the videos that I have posted. And then I also taught in other places, like even at my university, I used to teach my juniors and my classmates. So that also came under teaching experience. Pre-pandemic, I planned to get US clinical experience in February 2021. But unfortunately, because of COVID, all of that got cancelled. So I could not travel because I did not have a visa. So all my USCE was in form of tele-rotations. So I've basically done two tele-rotations and one virtual sim lab. So I did my first tele-rotation with Dr. Coleman in April 2020. And my second tele-rotation was done with Dr. Kohli in 2021 June also took part in a virtual simulation lab from august 2020 to, to june 2021 so all of that put together i had three letters of recommendation from, from doctors in the us and additionally i had another letter from the chair of the internal medicine department at my university's hospital so on a whole i had around four letters of recommendation close to five work experiences and about 10 volunteer experiences when I just joined med school, I was very, very interested in neurology and neuroscience. So that's I found out that one of my batchmates and my professor were working on a research paper. So I requested them if I could join them and they were very open to it. So they guided me as to how an academic paper is supposed to be written because I was literally in first year. I had no idea how all of this worked, but I was just interested in neuro. So I thought, okay, this is a wonderful opportunity for me. And then I published around two papers, both were in neurology and Alzheimer's disease. So that came under publication and like a little basic research that I had. I think I published the first one in 2016 and the second one in 2017. So those were my two publications. And then besides that, I also presented one of these papers at a conference. So that came under oral presentation. So all of this came under research experience. A lot of other IMGs, they work as a research assistant or they work as a research trainee. There are a lot of roles that you can find. I will make a separate video on how you can find research and what are the different kinds of research that you can get into. So I took step 1 in October 2019 and step 2 in March 2021. I scored 232 on step 1 and 240 on step 2. 
these probably aren't the 260s or 270s but i feel it was decent enough for me to get through most of the filters at programs so most people who match into internal medicine match in this range so i feel i was pretty okay as far as scores were concerned so year of graduation can both be an advantage and disadvantage so i graduated in july 2021 and i immediately applied for the match i don't have a lot of experience working as a doctor because i'm like a fresh graduate right so this is both an advantage and a disadvantage because there are some institutions that love fresh graduates and there are some institutions that prefer graduates who have some experience it really depends on how the program views it I personally feel like my application would have been stronger if I would have done these three things. Firstly, taking step three. Okay, so uh, we submitted Edis in September, right? So around October, I bought U World and started preparing for step three. Like my preparation was on track, and I was supposed to take the exam in January. But unfortunately, because of COVID, I did not have a visa, so I could not travel to the US because of which I could not take step three. Like so, if you have already graduated and you have your ECFMG certificate. Taking step three will definitely boost your application, especially if you're a non-US IMG. Like I know that this is not required by most programs, but some people have seen step three work in their favor since they had that score. And also, step three would get you an H one B visa. So if that's something you're considering, try to plan your thing in such a way that you're done with step three before you submit your rank order list. Um, second thing, uh, which I feel would have been better is if I had in-person rotations. I feel tele rotations did train me in a way. to adapt to the new form of healthcare but i some programs don't consider this as usce yet so i applied only to those programs that accepted tele rotations as usce so that limited the number of programs i could apply to also certain program directors may prefer in person rotations as compared to tele rotations this again like i said it may vary from one program to another so it just depends on the situation uh so i feel like in person rotations would have helped me apply to maybe like five or six more programs and also would have helped me with networking because when you think about it when you're doing tele rotations you're probably just interacting with one doctor right whereas if you're in the hospital you'll be able to meet so many more doctors and that way you'll be able to get to know more people so networking wise i feel tele rotation did give me a disadvantage so if i had a visa these things would have definitely been better but but anyway i feel i did the best given the situation and i'm glad it worked out i don't think this is something that i can personally do to make my application stronger but so if you do have seniors from your medical school who have matched in a particular program be in touch with them and ask them to like put in a good word for you so what happens is like if i ask some random resident to be like hey you know can you like recommend my application to the doctor it's not really going to work out because that person has not worked with me and i'm like a random stranger on the internet asking them to do this right so that is not really going to work out so if networking is obviously way more stronger if it is someone you have done a rotation with or someone you have worked with all of that will definitely help you and increase your chances and also with mentorship i feel like i never really had a proper mentor like i thought this one person was my mentor but they weren't really responding to my messages and i was just pretty clueless in the middle of the process so i was like okay you know let's just not depend on them let's try to figure this thing out on our own anyway i thought okay fine i have myself and there are lots of resources on the internet and there are many helpful youtube channels and many instagram pages that help me a lot So I got just one interview and I matched at that program. It was honestly like I never imagined because this program just had like 38% non-US IMGs. So I was pleasantly surprised to receive an invite from them. And I'm really glad it worked out. Like I told you guys in my previous video, I was like very anxious throughout interview season because I was scared nothing's going to work out. So I thought in future videos I will speak about interviews as well like how how to give interviews your best shot. So make sure you subscribe and if If you have any other questions, video suggestions, any of that, please leave them in the comments down below. I will be happy to address all of them in the upcoming weeks. So that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.